I was one of those kids growing up that fell in love with the gear the goalies were wearing. To a youngster, these were the brave men in full armor off to battle. If I had to come up with a reason why I started playing goal, it was because of the cool equipment. Goaltenders have unique equipment, and many myths abound concerning sizing, selection, and purchasing. How can a parent or goaltender today make smart choices when it comes to sizing, pricing, and the quality of protection? Protection is where this discussion starts and stops. A goaltender that develops a fear of the puck is almost impossible to cure. Usually, improperly sized equipment and poor protection are the causes of this problem. Most pro goaltenders wear cotton pajama-like t-shirts and pants underneath their equipment. Hockey socks really help to keep internal knee pads in place and present a professional look. The best way to keep the hockey socks in place is to use a garter belt to securely hold them. From a confidence point of view, the most important piece of equipment a goaltender wears is the jock. The goaltender's jock is larger and more thickly padded than a forward's jock because of the obvious trauma it's designed to prevent. Many pro goaltenders wear a forward's jock with a goaltender's jock worn over it for maximum protection. The pants are worn a lot larger than players' pants to fill more net. The thigh pads in goal pants are thicker and wider and the inner thigh also has additional protection. It is strongly recommended that all goaltenders wear an inner knee pad. This inner knee pad is important when executing a closed butterfly or a half pad save. Goaltenders use special skates that have additional protective shells which surround the foot and use a thicker, less rockered blade than a skate a forward or a defenseman would use. Young goalies should learn to tie their own skates as soon as possible. By pulling tightly and then forcing the toad downward, even younger goalies can get their skates pretty tight. Today, goaltenders can choose which way they prefer to tie their pads to their skates, leather toe straps or toe laces. The toe strap or lace is designed to keep your pad from spinning on your leg. It is a good idea to wrap some tape around your front skate post so that your strap or lace doesn't break every time you stop a shot there. The lace is attached by wrapping it around the front post and then threading it back through the various openings in the skate blade holder. Where it travels is up to the individual, but it should be completed by coming up on the top of the foot to be tied like the laces in the skate itself. The heel strap is the other strap that holds your pad directly to the skate. This strap should be slid through the last space in your skate blade holder. The calf straps should be worn snug enough to keep the pad in place. The upper straps are normally worn quite loose to allow the pad to sit vertically on the ice when butterflying. Young goaltenders should wear an internal collar style neck guard as well as the clear plastic dangler. If a goaltender today is flinching on hard shots, the first place to look is at their chest and arm pads. If there is a place to splurge when it comes to gear, this is the area. You want the sleeves to come within one to two inches of the wrist and the belly pad to just touch the top of your goalie jock. Check to see that the elbows and shoulders are covered in plastic with foam underneath. Look for protection on the inner portions of the arms and thick protection around the collarbone. Suspenders or belts are used to hold the pants in position, with the chest pad either tucked in or over the pants depending on individual preference. It's up to the individual to decide whether they are more comfortable with the chest and arm tucked into the pads with the suspenders over top or by wearing them over your suspenders. Select a jersey to wear that has a goalie cut. These jerseys have large arm and shoulder openings and are designed to allow easy movement with all that bulk. Most goaltenders today wear the pro-style mask and cage combo like Parker's wearing. Sometimes vision is hindered near the goaltender's feet if the helmet isn't properly sized. Attach the dangler with lacing as Parker has, so it moves freely but it won't rise up into your line of sight. The ability of the goaltender to poke check, puck handle, and deflect pucks properly will suffer if the young goalie attempts to use a blocker that's too large. Rising pucks or aggressive opponents may strike the fingers, so look for extra flaps of padded plastic in this area. The trapper is an important piece of equipment and is often improperly fitted. If the glove is too large, the young goaltender may not be able to control rebounds or grasp the shaft of the stick when clearing a loose puck. The best way to break in any piece of equipment is to bend them forcefully in directions they're not supposed to go. You can't hurt the glove.
There are some terms that are important to understand when we're talking about goaltender sticks. The blade. The bottom edge of the blade can be rockered or straight. The blade is rockered to assist in puck handling. As well as being rockered, a stick may also be curved to assist in lifting the puck when shooting. The ability to control rebounds may be affected and the backhand shot is almost impossible for the young goaltender if they're using a curved stick. Develop your rebound control and your shot with a straight blade and experiment with a curve a little later. To extend the life of your stick, keep it taped, especially the heel. Paddle. The length of the paddle will affect how erect the goaltender will be in their stance. If the paddle is too long, it will force the goaltender's elbow up too high, opening up a large hole underneath the arm and making it very difficult to keep the blade flat on the ice. If the paddle is too short, the goaltender will either be hunched over in their stance or the stick blade will make little if any contact with the ice. The shaft. This portion of the stick should be very smooth and free of tape so that the poke check will not be hindered. As with a forward stick, a good way to check overall length is to place the stick straight up in front of your face and mark the shaft at your chin height. One of the biggest myths that continue to this day is the fact that many believe that goaltenders should use dull skates. Sharp goal skates are crucial in today's game. Goaltenders today need to move explosively to get pucks behind the net, to race for loose pucks, to challenge shooters, and to move from one side of the net to the other inside and outside of the crease. Quite simply, this can't be done with dull skates. What do the terms sharpness and hollow actually mean? When a skate is viewed from the front, you can see there are two edges. The inside edge and the outside edge are connected with a concave area known as the hollow. Sharpness refers to how fresh the edge is on the inside and outside edge, and the hollow refers to how deep the concave portion is between the two edges. The deeper this hollow, the more the edges will dig into the ice. A young goalie should get their skates sharpened every five to six ice sessions using a hollow of an inch to three quarters of an inch. A more advanced goaltender can go as deep as three eighths of an inch depending on preferences and abilities. Keeks Keys Pack your bag in the order you get dressed, placing each piece in order in your bag. This will guarantee you will never forget anything. Learn to use sharper skates to get to the higher levels. Take pride in carrying your own gear and in getting dressed by yourself as soon as possible.